In order to demonstrate how to solve the simplex algorithm for integer solutions, I'm going to work with this particular problem. In another video, which I'll link in the description below, I've shown how to solve this using the simplex method. This time, we're going to add a constraint. We're only going to allow integer solutions. The original problem has this as its solution. We can see that x, y, and z are all giving us decimal answers, or fractions if we prefer to write them that way. But since we're now only allowed to have integer solutions, we need to think about what values we can have. Since x equals 3.3, we would sensibly check either side of that, so we check x equals 3 or 4. For y and z, we might also conclude the same. Of course, there are a variety of different ways we can combine those numbers. So, we would first of all check with each of the lower values, x being 3, y is 3, and z is 13. And we can work through our constraints. So 2x plus y is 9, 2y plus z is 19, and 2z plus x is 29. This would give us a value for our objective function of 86. Then, working through carefully and in a logical manner, we would try one value at its highest, so x taking its higher value, y taking its higher value, z taking its higher value, and then of course we can have two taking their higher values, x and y both taking four, and z taking its lower value, there x and z taking their higher values, y and z, and finally all three taking their higher values. And these are the values that we're going to get. Now we notice when looking at these constraints that we don't always stick to the values that we have. For example, the value in this cell is 11, but from our constraints 2x plus y must be less than or equal to 10. That means that this solution, x equals 4, y equals 3, z equals 13, is not allowed. Similarly, in this position, we've got 21 for 2y plus z. Our value had to be less than or equal to 20, so this is not allowed. And if we work through the rest of the constraints, we see that the following values are not allowed. So we notice that for this problem, it's only actually the top row where we don't have any constraints that have been broken. That means that so far, this would be our best solution. Now you do need to be very careful when checking integer values. Although for the original solution we have checked the values either side of the decimal answer, 3.3 gave us 3 or 4 for x and so on, this does not necessarily always lead to an optimal value. We have to be a little bit more careful than that and check values all around the original solution. Of course there are many many permutations of other numbers that we could try. We could try x is 2 or 5, y is 2 or 5, or z is 12 or 15, and different combinations may yield a better answer course this may take quite a while. For this particular problem if we let x equal 2, y equals 3 and z equals 14 we see that the constraints are still stuck to however our value of p is now bigger so this is a better solution with optimal values. Having checked the other possible combinations of numbers this is the best that we can do but to check the other ones it does take a little bit of time. Now in an exam it is highly likely that if you are requiring an integer value solution, it will be a relatively straightforward one. They would expect you to find it quite easily. However, in a real world problem, you must be aware that the solution could be pretty much anywhere around that optimal solution. You do need to check a range of values. I'm going to change the problem slightly to illustrate a slightly different point. If I change this constraint, 2x plus y is less than or equal to 11 now, rather than 10, we do get a different solution to the simplex problem. If we follow it through, that is the solution. x is 3.7, y is 3.4, z is 13.1, and we've got a p-value of 90.6. If we look at our constraints, two of the values are now allowable, in our second row and our fourth from the bottom. The values which are in the row fourth from the bottom are still not allowed because that third constraint has a value of 32, 2z plus x. However, now in our second row, we are allowed this value as well. So when x is 4, y is 3, z is 13, the constraints are now not broken and we would get a p-value of 89. Once again, this is the best solution. I've checked the other ones. The other values do not yield a better solution, but now we've got a higher value of p. This is more optimal than the top row and the bottom row because our value of p is higher. And remember, this is a maximizing problem. So when working with an integer values solution, 
Use simplex as per normal, find your solution, and then consider integer values around that point. You may need to be careful. If you're just doing it with two variables, it's pretty straightforward. Once you get three or more, you need to be very, very careful because the different combinations can lead to better values. However, it's pretty straightforward. Good luck with it. I hope it works out well. Thank <laughs> you.